Hey everybody, Chris Crest here. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. So I've been putting off a little bit of car projects, Raptor projects, if you will. One of those is swapping out the differential fluid for new fluid and then also swapping out to the Ford Performance differential cover. All right, so right behind me here we have my 2021 Ford Raptor and I'm going to try to uh, walk you guys through how to swap out the differential cover, install a new gasket, new differential cover bolts, new fluid, and get you on your way. All right, so let's get started. for the rear differential fluid change and just like my previous Raptor I opted to go with the Ford Performance rear differential cover it's a pretty nice cover it's actually made by Spicer uh, you can get their version without the Ford Performance logo and save a little bit of money but I went ahead and spent the extra for the bougie Ford Performance version but anyways, a couple things about this cover that you need to be aware of is that the bolts that it comes with are very weak. You're better off to either use your original factory bolts or like I did, I opted for a nice set of ARP stainless steel bolts. So anyways, I'm gonna kind of walk you through my process for removing the old cover and installing the new cover and then filling the differential and that sort of thing. So the first thing you have to do of course is drop your spare tire and wheel and put that out of the way. Now I did not do that on video just for the sake of time. Once you get that out of the way you have to loosen up the bolts going around your factory differential cover. On the top, there is a brake fluid bracket that has a 10 millimeter bolt that holds it onto the top. And then one of the differential bolts has a pin that sticks out of it that kind of guides the bracket. So you're gonna have to remove that first, then you can remove that one bolt at the top. And after you remove all the bolts, just kind of uh, work your way around and the cover will most likely pop off and it's going to get kind of messy. So what I tend to do is to loosen up the bolts a little at a time and then allow the fluid to start flowing out. So after you get the old differential cover removed and the fluid out, you want to kind of wipe down the inside of your differential to get any excess old fluid out and then probably the most time consuming part of this entire process is getting the differential mating surface cleaned up and ready to install the new cover and gasket. Now also with the Spicer or Ford Performance differential cover there is a gasket that comes with it. I do not recommend using this gasket. I used it on my previous Ford Raptor and unfortunately that thing is prone to leaking. So spend the extra money and get yourself a lube locker differential gasket. These are made to go on dry so there's no need to add any additional RTV. And they cost a little bit more but they're much less prone to leaking once you install your, your new cover. So as far as cleaning the differential cover 
surface or the differential mating surface for the cover. I used kind of a variety of stuff. I used some Amsoil engine degreaser to kind of clean up the surface. I also used a scrubbing pad, a stainless steel one to kind of get in there. I used a little bit of very fine grit sandpaper to kind of smooth the surface out. And then it just takes some time. So the old gasket is part metal, part rubber, and you will see some kind of rust looking uh, on the mating surfaces, but don't let that bother you. As long as the mating surface is smooth and doesn't have any residue on it, you should be perfectly fine. And especially using the lube locker gasket, as that gasket is made to kind of take up the slack for imperfect surfaces. So when you've got your surface all ready to go and you want to install the new gasket and the differential cover, I was doing it by myself. It's a little difficult to hold the cover up and get the screws or the bolts started. The gasket can slide around, so if it helps, put just a dab of RTV on a couple spots on the gasket just to kind of hold it in place as you put the cover up against the mating surface and get a couple bolts started. Once you get a couple bolts started, it'll kind of hold it in place and then you can get the rest of your bolts installed and then um, start, uh, start getting ready to torque those guys down. So this is a, a rather large cover with a lot of bolts. Uh, when you start to cinch down the bolts on the differential cover, what you're going to want to do is go in, go in a star-like pattern, kind of like if you're torquing down a, um, a wheel on a car or a truck or whatnot. Uh, you know, start on one end, go to the opposite end, go to the opposite end, go to the opposite end, and just kind of keep going back and forth like that. So I worked around all the bolts doing that a few times, and then at the end when I was ready to apply a torque value. I set my torque wrench for roughly 21 foot pounds. So I think the factory uh, torque value is 18 foot pounds or 20 foot pounds if I'm not mistaken. Um, Spicer, they said uh, up to 25 foot pounds. So I went with 20, 21 and uh, that, I think that's what I did on the last uh, differential cover as well. So one other thing that you may want to do since these ARP bolts or any bolts for that matter, um, you may want to add just a dab of blue Loctite to the threads on each one of those bolts. You know, this is a differential on an off-road vehicle and uh, you know, it's going to be prone to vibration and stuff like that. So you don't want any of those bolts to work themselves loose and cause yourself some sort of a differential leak. Now after you get all the bolts reinstalled, you will have to reinstall the brake fluid bracket on the top. Now the ARP bolts did not have any that had a stud sticking out, so I reused one factory bolt on just that one particular spot, just so I had that shaft sticking out of the end of the bolt for the bracket to slide over, and then of course the bracket also had a 10 millimeter bolt that screwed into the top of the differential housing. Once you got your cover installed, all your bolts torqued to the proper spec, then you can go ahead and start adding your fluid. Now I'm using Amsoil. I've used Amsoil in a lot of my vehicles over the years, differential fluid, oil, etc. So here I'm going to go ahead and use their gear lube as well. And uh, so it takes about three and a half quarts, more or less. Um, you have two fill holes on this particular differential cover. You have an upper and a lower. Use the lower fill hole and just fill until the uh, fluid is kind of coming out and, that, and then put your plug in. The upper Fill hole is for lifted vehicles, so if you need to add additional fluid or if there's a, an angle to the differential because the, the truck is lifted, then you have that extra hole. But for a factory height truck, um, 
to just use the bottom hole. One other thing to note is that you should check the torque on the drain plug and the other fill plug, the upper fill plug. They were just hand tight in the differential cover that, that I got. Um, so you wanna make sure that those are torqued down. The plugs already have a type of thread locker on there. So all you have to do is just torque those guys down to ensure that they're not gonna come out, you know, driving down the road. Okay, after you uh, torque everything down and you fill your differential to the proper level, you should go for a road test uh, with or without the spare tire. Maybe you wanna wait and put the spare tire on after a road test, but do a quick road test and just make sure that you're not seeing any fluid leaking after your road test. And, um, and there you have it. You have a nice new Ford Performance or Spicer rear differential cover for your Raptor or F-150. These are used in both types of vehicles. Okay, so any questions or comments, please put those down below. I appreciate everybody watching today's video and I will catch you all in the next one. Y'all take it easy.